This is your no bull guide to growing Venus flytraps in under nine minutes. Let's go. Do not feed your plants. Why not? They will catch food by themselves. So honestly, do not even worry about it. They can't be underfed, they can't be overfed, but I do understand wanting to feed your plants. So only give them live bugs that are small enough to completely fit inside their traps. And please, never feed them human food. It will kill them. But none of this even matters if you can't give them the right sunlight. Do not grow these plants on a windowsill. They need at least six hours of full, unfiltered, direct sunlight outside each and every single day. But I get it. Some people still want to grow them on a windowsill or you might not have any other choice. So for you guys, I highly recommend getting a very powerful grow light. Not these rubbish little teeny things, a proper grow light like Hydro Farm or Sansi. This stops your plant from becoming long and leggy in search of sunlight and from death blooming. Remember, if your plant looks like this, I promise you, it isn't thriving. It is dying. Especially if you aren't giving them the right water. Do not use tap water. Believe it or not, but they add a lot of minerals and chemicals to the water so that it tastes all right and to prevent bacteria from growing. This is fine for humans, but not for Venus flytraps because they have adapted to grow in areas with very little nutrition in their soil. The best water you can use is rainwater, distilled water, reverse osmosis water, or deionized water. These types of waters have no added minerals. Only use tap water if you are extremely desperate and go back to the good stuff as soon as possible. They must always have enough water to stay between wet and damp. Your water level should be topped up to one third the height of the pot. In summer, water should be added as soon as their bowl dries out. In winter, that's water in their bowl one to five days after their bowl has dried out, depending on how warm it is where you live. This lets air get to their roots and prevents them from rotting away and dying off and doesn't let them dry out. Do not let their soil dry out completely, ever. This will kill them. So let's talk about soil. Never use normal potting soil. It has too much nutrition inside of it, which will kill your plants because their roots have evolved to grow in soil with very little nutrition. This is why they're carnivorous. They catch their nutrition because their soil has none inside of it. The best soil mixture that you can use is peat and perlite in a ratio of one is to one. What that means is one pot of perlite to one pot of peat. And make sure you use soil that has no added nutrition in it. But that literally means nothing if you use the wrong pot. You should only use plastic pots. Any other types of pots leaches minerals into the soil, which will kill the plant's roots. But I get it. Some people love the look of terracotta or metal pots. So if you really want to use something else, it has to be glazed inside and outside, which prevents the minerals from leaching into the soil. You also want to make sure that the pot you use is the right size. Between six to eight inches is the perfect size. Not too big and not too small. Reproduction. If they flower, castrate them. Flowers drain them of energy and unless you want to spend three years growing them from seed, the amount of energy they use making the flower really isn't worth it. Chop the flower into pieces and shove it into some soil. You'll have a 50-50 chance of a plant growing from this. Remember, winners know when to stop. Flytraps naturally divide every few years. When you come to repot them, you'll have more flytraps around than you know what to do with. You only need to repot when your pot becomes cramped or every two to five years, depending on your soil health and climate. The hotter the climate, the more you have to repot. If your soil starts to smell really bad or it's a low quality brand, then you'll need to repot more often. 
but the best time to repot is during dormancy. Do not throw your plants away in winter. Every winter, these plants go to sleep and store their energy for spring. If it goes completely black, don't worry about it. This is dormancy. Just make sure to give them their sunlight and a little bit less water, like I mentioned earlier. But this also depends on the country that you live in. If you live somewhere tropical, they probably won't go dormant, so you might need to consider something like a fridge dormancy. If you live somewhere extremely cold, Canada, you might also need to give them a fridge dormancy. Some people say dormancy is good, some people say it doesn't really matter. I've always let them do their own natural thing and I've never had a problem. If you grow them on a windowsill, well, then you're going to have to figure out if you want to give them a fridge dormancy or not. But if you do live somewhere extremely cold, well, you're gonna have to be careful of their temperature range. For the most part, they don't really care. A couple cold nights below zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit won't really affect these plants. But for long stretches of time, consider putting them in the fridge for dormancy or putting them in an unheated room like a garage. If you live somewhere that gets over 40 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit, consider protecting them from the afternoon sun with a shade cloth and keeping their water topped up at all times. But what about their humidity? Well, they don't really care about humidity when growing, even if you live in a desert. As long as you protect them from the intense afternoon light and heat and give them a lot of water, they should be okay. They won't look great because... desert? Yet, if you grow them somewhere tropical, well, just make sure to give them enough water and air movement. This prevents them from getting moldy and any other pests. Aphids, mites, scale, mealybugs. They might be carnivorous, but they do get these pests. Use a food safe pesticide for these pests. Something like Bayer 3 in 1, Effector Rose Care, or Bug. Bug Clear Ultra Gun. You can get mold, botrytis, or even fungus, so make sure you have really good airflow. It's not really a problem when growing your plants outside, but this does happen if you fertilize your plants. You really don't need to fertilize them, but you can fertilize them with max C at half strength. Like I said, you really don't need to feed or fertilize these plants, but you could do this if you want to feed them without touching your plants. They cannot hurt you. These are modified leaves and are as soft as eyelashes, literally. So if you want to touch them to see how they close, you can. Just don't do it more than about two times a month, as each time you do it, it wastes a bit of their energy. If you learned anything new, please consider subscribing and send this to someone who might need to look after their plants a little bit better. And if you got this far, you'd probably like to see what it looks like when four wasps go up against four different fly traps. I'll see you there.